Hello. <laughs> uh, hi everyone, my name is Summer. I'm 12 years old and I'm from Singapore Chinese Girls School. I am Victoria. I am Summer's mom and I'm a housewife. We grew strawberries in Singapore and started a blog, SG Strawberries. This blog is now number one in the Google search engine with the text, Grow Singapore Strawberries. <laughs> So how did a housewife and two kids manage to achieve this and to do it all without spending a lot of money? Because from pots to compost, we recycled and used what we had at home to grow strawberries. Yes, this is a very eco-friendly talk. <laughs> Here's how we got started. My cousin Sean and I were really bored for our homework. And the idea suddenly so struck us. Hey, mom, wouldn't it be fun to grow strawberries at home? There was no maps or checklist on how to grow strawberries in a tropical country. In fact, everyone told us it's not possible to grow strawberries in Singapore. But we didn't want to give up without giving our best shot. There was lots of information about growing strawberries in the temperate country so we researched on what strawberries need to grow, and we adapted accordingly. So, first things first, strawberries need acidic soil and sunlight to bear fruit. As only my bedroom has the morning sun, all our strawberries are grown there. Mom says we shouldn't use any chemicals in my room, so we froze black coffee and used these cubes of frozen coffee to acidify our soil. Strawberry needs lots of fertilizers to bear fruit. We make our own seaweed fertilizer by pulping expired kelp from our kitchen. Mom, that's disgusting! You remember how slimy it was, right? But that makes for very good organic fertilizer, and it's free! <laughs> our experiment showed that strawberries that were fed on this homemade, free of charge fertilizer grew faster. The next challenge that we had was space. When we learned to germinate strawberry seeds so well that very quickly we ran out of table space for our seedlings by the bedroom windows. So what did we do? We looked at our window grows and went, hmm. <laughs> we know that strawberry roots need to stay cool even as they look the sun. And I learned in science class that the color white reflects heat away. So instead of buying pots, we recycled plastic bottles, painted them white to keep them cool, and hung all these little strawberry bottles on the window grills. This is a photo of our completed project. It's pretty cool, huh? And as we grew better and better at growing strawberry seeds, more and more of these bottles began to cover my bedroom windows. And some very clever person commented, hey, this is like gardens by the bed. <laughs> my mom and I had to get left. The next challenge that we had was a heat wave from May to July 2015. Some of the strawberry leaves turned brown. Friends from our gardening group in Facebook, SG Farming in Apartments, who grew strawberries and lived abroad, advised us to water our plants with chilled water or ice. According to them, strawberries can tolerate daytime heat as high as 38 degrees Celsius, but at night, the plants need to cool down and recover when the temperature slips to 25 degrees Celsius. So we adapted accordingly by air conditioning our strawberries at night in the bedroom. <laughs> and after many months of testing, research, videos, and hard work, I woke up and saw a ladder in my bed. I climbed the ladder and saw little itty bitty daisy like flowers. These guys. It was awesome! I was whooping and cheering so loudly, I'm pretty sure mom could hear me from the other side of the house. Sorry, mom. Now that we have flowers, it's time to pollinate them. But hey, we don't have any bees in our bedroom. So what do we do? Children from SEGS, Summer and Shona, became human bees. With a paintbrush, they pollinate every flower and help began strawberry fruiting process. 
After six months of hard work, numerous challenges, countless failure, we finally succeeded. On October 20th, 2015, we harvested and tasted our strawberries for the very first time. They were absolutely delicious, intensely flavorful and sweet. The children loved them. They say they tasted like candies. And the best thing of all, as a mummy gardener, homegrown strawberries are pesticide free. <laughs> this when, is good. Oh, when you have a seemingly impossible dream and people tell you it cannot be done, it's never been done before, and there's no information anywhere to be found on how to even begin, don't worry, give it your best shot. You never know unless you try. And don't be afraid to fail and do not be afraid to look for your own answers. This is going to show that nothing is truly impossible. Even, wait, not even finding a needle in the haystack. Seriously, all you need is a really strong magnet to do that. And now we'd like to show you a video of our gardens by the bed. All our videos are written and presented by my cousin and, and I, you know, Shona. Wait, wait, which slide is it? It's okay. Hello, I am Summer. Konnichiwa, Shona this. Okay, Today, we will be showing you how strawberries grow from flower to fruit. It all starts from a flower, like this one over here. We, br we, br we brush the pollen from the outside to the inside, like this. In this way, when the, flat, when the pollen hits the center, it will fertilize the seeds and it will grow into the fruit. And when the flower gets fertilized, the next day, the petals should fall off like uh, this one. Then the fruit will turn green, kind of like uh, this one, then white. Uh, oh, like this one. And see how the seeds are reddened first? Don't freak out. This is normal. It just means the fruit is going to redden like this one right here. So when it gets big enough, you can pluck it and eat it. And there's seriously nothing better than hand-picked fruit fresh from the plant. Oh, and this is our white soul strawberries. It grows white strawberries that are really, really sweet. And, oh, don't mind this. So, ask me, Mom, can we go grapes next? Huh? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks.